Hi, and welcome to this edition of Looking Point Tech Talks. I'm Dominic Zinni, and today I'll be your ambassador to ICE. That's right, Cisco's identity services engine. In this tech talk today, we aim to answer the following two questions at somewhat of a high level. What is Cisco's identity services engine, and why should I care about it? Okay, let's dive right in. All right, Cisco ICE, what does it do? Well, first of all, ICE provides authentication for those devices and users connecting to the network, be it wired, wireless, or VPN. And then based on that authentication and additional context we're able to gather, what that user is able to do on the network. It's no longer just green light, red light. There is this in-between area based on what device the user is connecting from, what time of day it is, et cetera. Visibility. So ICE tightly integrates with your network devices in order to determine what types of devices, what types of operating systems are connecting to your network. So even without enforcing authentication or authorizing network sessions, ICE can add value on day one just by telling you what devices are connected. BYOD is a thing. It's happening. People are bringing their own devices into work, whether you like it or not. So ICE provides us a mechanism to differentiate these, these devices when they're connected to the network. So we can go as far as enforcing registration and posture on these BYOD devices, or we can simply determine that a user is connecting from a non-corporate asset and provide them a limited uh, access to the network. Guest lifecycle management. So ICE provides us the ability to create guest accounts uh, delete guest accounts, and authenticate guest accounts onto the network through a central web authentication portal that provides uh, access to guests both on the wireless network and on the wired networks. And lastly, ICE provides an open ecosystem. So all of this rich context that ICE is gathering around these network sessions is valuable both to other Cisco security products, such as Firepower Threat Defense, or third-party security products that you may have. So ICE provides an open API to share this contextual information, both um, in terms of providing information to external systems and external systems informing ICE when a certain endpoint may be compromised so that ICE can make an adjustment to that, that device's network access policy. So why do I need a solution like Cisco ICE? I think to better help understand uh, the context of the use case, uh, it'll help us to look at a traditional trust boundary. We have internal networks, and traditionally, before the onset of mobile devices and BYOD, um, there were well-known assets connecting to our internal networks. They were provisioned by corporate IT, um, tightly controlled by corporate IT, so they were well-known entities. And we connected these internal networks to the internet for various business functions. Problem was that this guy was also connected to the internet. So this established our trust boundary, our initial trust boundary, I should say. The internet was untrusted, internal networks were trusted. In order to enforce policy at this trust boundary, we installed network firewalls. So we're all familiar with this, this topology and this trust boundary. Now, looking forward at a more modern trust boundary, things have changed a little bit. We start off with a similar picture. We've got the internet untrusted and our internal networks trusted. You can see here we've differentiated between our core networks and our access networks. Our core networks typically have fixed assets connecting to them inside of a locked closet. So those stay trusted. Our access networks mostly have mobile devices connecting to them, laptops, tablets, iPhones, BYOD devices. So those devices are now moving between the untrusted internet and back into the office to the trusted access network. Now, this presents a problem as we don't know whether or not this guy has been there. So we can no longer trust those devices connected to the access networks by default. So that becomes untrusted. Those devices have to earn their trust they earn their trust by authenticating to ICE, where we centrally define our network access control policies. And Cisco ICE integrates very tightly with those network access devices, your closet switches, your wireless access points, in order to enforce that network access control policy 
on a per user and per device basis. So we can now see why Cisco ICE adds value to the security posture of our network, and we can see the use case for where we would want to employ Cisco ICE in our network. I hope you have found this tech talk both informative and useful. Until next time, thanks for watching.